What's up, everyone? So this should be our last stroll through older formats. Uh, this is going up the week before Pro Tour Origins, and hopefully after that I'll be able to record some awesome Standard content for all y'all. And uh, it should be fun. Uh, standard after a Pro Tour is always great. There's always a lot of cool decks that are out there, and uh, the, the Pro Tour format never ends up being like what the actual format looks like you know it just gives people more information to work with and go off of and stuff so uh it'll be fun that's like the best time of year in my opinion but in the meantime we're playing some modern i got some puppy hi pu say hi puppy she's excited too but uh yeah so if y'all have been following me uh you know that i've been playing some jund i've been doing a decent amount of streaming and I don't know. Uh, Jund did okay, but now the format is kind of in a place where I think it might just be right to go back to the old Abzan deck. So uh, some might play that's, or some might say that Siege Rhino is wildly unplayable, uh, but that's not really the case. So I started building this deck, and then I, I looked at it, and I realized that the main deck spells are basically the exact same as uh, <laughs> the deck that Eric Froelich used to top eight. Pro Tour Fate Reforged, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, I built some other versions of Abzan that looked a little different than this, but I want to go back to the roots and uh, see how this did, so that's what we're going to do today. So, yeah, this is basically Efro's deck from the Pro Tour, only difference is a Maelstrom Pulse instead of a Dismember. Uh, and then the Mana Base. I have a Ghost Quarter. I've been a very long-time Ghost Quarter fan, and whereas Efro had Gavany Township to win Lingering Souls Mirrors, I don't think that's all that important anymore. So instead, we have the Ghost Quarter. We also have a Vault of the Archangel. So uh, Burn is a much more important matchup than the Mirror Matches are at this point. So the Vault definitely makes the cut. Uh, I also like the Ghost Quarter to handle random creature lands and uh, the various Tron and Amulet decks and whatnot. Uh, I also like Stirring Wildwood a lot better than the Treetop Villages. Uh, I think Treetop Village is a better card, but... You do need some white mana, so Stirring Wildwood helps with that. And then, you know, of course, we have the Twilight Myers to backdoor Liliana off uh, Noble Hierarch draw. So, uh, yeah, the, the main deck is pretty normal, I guess. And then the sideboard is where the cool stuff happens. Uh, and I basically cut most of the cool stuff, I guess. I had a Gideon in here for a little bit, Gideon Jura. I think that card's pretty sweet, but uh, one of the things that I like a lot is the fact that we have a Dromokus Command. We also have a Celestial Purge. Uh, and both of these kill Karanos, which is nice, because if you're playing Jund, basically the only thing you have to kill a Karanos is Unravel the Aether, and that's not really good against the rest of their decks. So, uh, Dramokus Command and Celestial Purge actually are pretty solid magic cards in their own right, so Dramokus Command can come in against Burn. I guess, you know, Celestial Purge could too, but it's not super exciting. Uh, but both of these deal with Karanos, they both deal with Splinter Twin Combo, they both deal with Blood Moon, so those are... The biggest things to worry about in the matchup, but also, like, Dramokus Command can just, like, stop a Lightning Bolt and fight a Snapcaster Mage and do all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, Celestial Purge certainly has, uh, you know, not as wide a range of usefulness against things like Splinter Twin, but if <clears throat> they're playing the black for Tassiger and whatnot, well, now we have a clean answer. So, uh, I like these two cards a lot. Uh, also have a couple Timely Reinforcements. Obviously, Burn is kind of a tough matchup, so... Uh, I like the Timelies there. Uh, Stony Silence, obviously against Affinity, but since Tron is kind of a player now, we need those. Uh, also have Leyline of the Void, which is a big game. Big, big game. And still, people do not play Leyline of the Void. I don't understand. It's uh, it's good against Snapcaster Kologon's Command. It is good against various graveyard decks that beat the crap out of you. Uh, Leyline is great. You should try it. Uh, also have another Ghost Quarter, which is kind of like the fourth Fulminator Mage, except for the fact that Ghost Quarter is a zero mana Fulminator, so uh, I would prefer to draw a Fulminator and a Ghost Quarter as opposed to just two Fulminators or two Ghost Quarters, so that's why we have the mix here. Uh, also have a random Spell Skite, which is like a thing that Boggles might not sideboard around. Uh, it's also okay against Burn, so, uh, you know, I like to, like to keep them guessing a little bit, and Spell Skite's a sweet card. Uh, we could activate it off Noble Hierarch in theory, but that's that's kind of a pipe dream. Uh, and then we have a Gaddock Teague, which doesn't affect us at all, which is very, very nice. And uh, for all the Tron decks out there trying to Karn me and Ugin me, just stop it. Just quit it. We have the Teague. Uh, you can't do anything about it. Maybe you can Pyroclasm, but hopefully that's not the case. 
Uh, and then Wormhole Engine is the other big thing, but we have Path to Exile since we're playing Abzan, so it should not be a big deal if we get old Papa Teague in play here. And man, do I miss Greensland Zenith. Uh, if I could play like three or four Zeniths and then uh, a Teague, I would be so much more happy with my life, but uh, here we are. So yeah, that's about it. Nothing too spicy going on today, like I said, just like the Vault, the Teague, the, the Kill Your Karados stuff, Ley Lines, but other than that... Same old, same old, but we're going to give it a go, see how it does, and uh, I feel like this deck is well positioned, so that's why we're here.